Hey, what's up guys? Arva here and welcome back to another episode of my F123 My Team Career Mode. This is episode number 14 today for the Dutch Grand Prix in Season 1. If you guys did miss the previous episode at the Belgium Grand Prix with our first ever sprint race weekend around Spa, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one. We had another rocket ship car kind of situation where at Spa we could lower the rear wing, really get some great straight line speed out of this car with the best engine on the grid. The race didn't exactly pan out how we wanted to. At one point we were fighting Red Bulls and the Mercedes of Russell at the start of the race but by the end of it we made the wrong call with the tyre strategy and also just we just didn't have as much pace as you would have wanted but to be honest being disappointed not to be on the podium at Spa is a pretty good show of where the car is and where our ambitions are so early on in this series because, you know, we've already got one race win, obviously, at the Canadian Grand Prix. And a second time we were on the podium was at Monaco. So we were trying to add a third podium finish to our tally for this season. The fact we're disappointed by that, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to take some solace there. And we have improvements to make on the car still, as uh, we had three failures, three of them, uh, last episode in terms of the R&D upgrade. So going to be good to get those on. But speaking of upgrades, we're now going to upgrade our HQ facilities and we're going to upgrade the personnel for the first time we've bought the uh, pace part of the personnel facility to try and boost Piastri and future teammates overall pace in the car obviously there are multiple levels to that so we've just got level one on the pace for the personnel upgrades and we go ahead and purchase a weight reduction upgrade on the chassis side of things because there isn't there really isn't much else to purchase right now because I wanted to wait for these two aero upgrades to come in because the next part of the car I want to upgrade is continuing the downforce upgrading we've done we've now got two upgrades on that side on the front and rear but unfortunately the next set of upgrades they're major front and rear downforce upgrades they're quite pricey both over 1000 R&D points we only have you know, just over 1,000 right now. We still can't afford one of them on the front downfall. So I'm going to, the tactic's going to be, we're going to save enough to purchase both upgrades at the same time, just to have that balance from front to rear. So that is going to mean maybe we're in a bit of a plateau phase with upgrades after this episode. But, you know, considering it's season one, where the car is at the moment, that's not the worst thing in the world, to be fair. We can kind of take the hit. We've already got a buttload of points versus McLaren, our rivals below us. And yes, it would be nice to maybe chase after Aston Martin but maybe that goal's a bit too lofty but you may have noticed we have continued our upgrading on the HQ because we went and bought another personnel upgrade on the focus on the focus awareness and racecraft part of personnel that's not going to come in until next episode but when that does that will also boost all those attributes of Piastri and future teammates and Piastri already will see that pace boost going into Zandvoort which is going to be good hopefully he can build on what he did at Spa scoring his first First points in Formula One at the Dutch GP. Going into this Dutch GP, even him aside, the car is in an amazing place. This is unreal stuff, unprecedented stuff, really, in season one of a My Team Career mode. Annoyingly, kind of showing, I don't know what on earth the kind of balance changes they made to this game, but it's made things a little bit easy in season one. It was we're now technically, technically above Ferrari in season one with R&D, with reduced R&D, I should say, and increased R&D for the teams around us. So bizarre stuff, but Mercedes goes up to Red Bull, McLaren makes some small upgrades, Alpine make a big leap. So clearly the increased R&D is helping the AI at least in terms of the grid spreads getting closer and closer. And I wouldn't be surprised by the end of the season, maybe Red Bull aren't the quickest car on paper in the R&D chart. But in terms of for us on reduced, we're still earning a decent amount of R&D enough to make all these upgrades to be challenging Ferrari uh, on the performance chart. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I feel like there probably needs to be some sort of patch at some point to, to rebalance the balance changes they've made. I don't know. It's a really odd one, but we just got to take the game as it is. You know, we've done the most we can with the game settings to make things as hard as possible for ourselves. And we're just in this situation where this is how the game plays out, basically. So it, there's nothing much else to do. So we just carry on our good work and try and do the best job we can. And those two downforce upgrades were very much 
uh, and a good time, good timing for the Dutch Grand Prix. As you can see, it is rather wet once again in one of these sessions for qualifying here at Zandvoort. So that extra downforce is going to help us out. Zandvoort, really a roller coaster circuit. So we're going to need as much grip and downforce as possible. So good timing. Would have been nice maybe around Spa, but good to th that those upgrades at least came in for this one. And for our first flying lap, I thought that was actually a pretty tidy lap up into P6. So actually showing some really good pace. Still about seven tenths off the fastest man. But then some absolute worldy lap times come in. I, I looked at the delta time. I was like six seconds. And I realized, okay, the track got dry. It wasn't actually that wet in terms of in spray on the camera so now the track has got to dry in the middle of q1 in the same session so it's a real big rush to get out on the soft compound attire we're on the flying lap we've already gained about three seconds but we've got a lot of traffic here as alonso in the way logan Sargent doesn't get out the way what are you doing what are you doing? Logan Sargent doing his best Carlos Sainz impression from Montreal in real life. Where? Where? where did he even? He didn't even attempt to get out of the way. His, his light is flashing, meaning he's harvesting ERS. So he's on an outlap and he didn't think to move left off the racing line. He was literally parked on the racing line. If you're a car getting out of the way, jump off it. Jump off the racing line. So... That's ruined our qualifying because I'm sure everyone's going to go so much quicker. I've got no time left. Uh, the the checkered flag is going to fall in 15 seconds. So I decided to finish a, a second flying lap with a broken front wing. I know, a bit crazy, but I thought, okay, we're still gaining time here. I've need, I nearly gained about two seconds on this flying lap without a front wing, which looks just comically ridiculous. But um, maybe there's half a chance this lap might be good enough if others maybe got caught out, didn't bother go to soft tyres, maybe, across the line. It's very wishful thinking, and the thinking's not going to pan out. P21. Thank you, Logan Sargent. Thank you very much. So... We are out in Q1. Sonoda was the only man who got caught out who stayed on intermediate. Sergeant, ironically, is just ahead of me in P20 then for tomorrow's race. That's frustrating. I knew there was going to be some traffic because everyone was going out for the dry tyre. But, you know, Alonso, he got out of the way nicely. We drove around him. Sergeant, in such a high-speed part of the circuit, needs to be getting out of the way of the racing line. So the AI having a very dirty driver moment here in qualifying. And we've got a lot of work to do now in the race. I don't know what the pace is like going to be, be like for us in the race in terms of now that I don't have a representative lap time on the dries, I don't know how this race will pan out because it is going to be a dry race. So I guess we're going to have to see. Historically, Zandvoort's actually, actually been one of the more difficult circuits versus the AI. They're very rapid and consistent here with tyre wear as well. So we're just going to have to find out. It's a stab into the unknown. Let's go to the grid. Welcome along then to the North Sea coast and to the Zandvoort circuit. We're 25 miles away from Amsterdam for today's Dutch Grand Prix. It's a race the great Jim Clark won on four occasions, leading for an astonishing total of 370 laps. A lap of this short 2.6 mile Zandvoort circuit features 14 corners, 10 to the right and four to the left, with a 678 meter main straight heading into turn one, Tarzan Corner. And on that straight with DRS open, that'll be the best overtaking opportunity on this track. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. A fantastic effort from Charles Leclerc yesterday, and it's put him on pole. And Max Verstappen lines up alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Perez, Russell, Hamilton, Sainz, Fernando Alonso, Norris, Ocon, Gasly, Albon, Bottas, Stroll, Magnussen, Hulkenberg, Oscar Piastri, Joe, Liam Lawson, De Vries, Sargent, the owner driver, Sargent. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track where preparations are underway. And with me today, of course, is Natalie Pinkham. Let's have a chat about Williams. What do you make of their performance so far this season? Well, the atmosphere within the team seems very positive at the moment. Everyone seems like they're in great spirits and having a lot of fun doing what they do. And that has definitely contributed to the performances we've seen. 
So it's going to be a dry race, but there's still some clouds looming over from Saturday. Overcast start, but I think it's going to get sunnier as we go on through this Grand Prix. We are starting on the soft compound attire because apart from Sonoda, most of this grid are on softs. And I'm going to learn my lesson from Spa and not get too overconfident with the medium to soft strategy. Because at Spa, we really were in trouble by the end of the race. So I'm going to start on softs. I feel like Zanvor would be very much like Spa, where the soft tyre doesn't go a long way and is not a good race tyre, unlike the Hungarian Grand Prix, where it ended up being an amazing race tyre. So, yeah, track to track, you always have that difference. So we've been burned a little bit from Spa. So let's play a bit cautious now and just start on the softs, try and get as many positions as we can in the opening laps. And then we'll kind of see how we bed into the race from there. From P21 on the grid, we go to five red lights. Ferrari on pole, lights out, and we're on the way for the Dutch GP. Joe Gran Yu does not get off the line at all, pretty much, to the point where I almost had a collision and a horrendous crash. We actually did make contact with Joe, as noted by the warning, but that could have been so much worse because I almost didn't get given space by, ironically, Sergeant on my right-hand side as we try to navigate navigate around the outside of the Chinese driver as we go down the inside of the Alpha Tower of De Vries. Although to my surprise, I can't out-traction him on the entry and exit there of the carousel. So De Vries and maybe the AI showing, like I said, a bit more pace here around Zandvoort compared to Spa. Also, you know, not just the AI being better around Zandvoort than they are at Spa. I just, I will admit, I'm not that great around Zandvoort. So this might be a bit of a challenging race. Maybe another Hungarian Grand Prix where we're really fighting just to get a couple of points. Maybe, you know, P8 at the Hungara ring after being at the back of the grid. Now we go down the inside of De Vries finally on lap two to get up into P18. But the problem is actually on that straight, we don't have the straight line speed anymore. We do have downforce and grip as we go dancing around the outside of Liam Lawson at the carousel as a load of cars are bunched up. Piastri, Magnussen, the Alfa Romeo. We've got a bit of a worn engine, but more so the setup at this circuit. The wings are so high because of the high downforce corners that we actually don't have that much straight line speed. Even with the best engine on the grid, I'm feeling quite draggy on the main straight, so that's gonna be a problem for us today. But two people who aren't feeling very draggy are the Red Bull cars of Sergio Perez and Verstappen. Perez gets up into first place, overtakes Leclerc from the lead of the race. Verstappen nipping at the heels of the man from Monaco, now in a Red Bull sandwich. So it's Perez into the lead off the back of his win at the Belgium Grand Prix. Clearly has maybe got some focus on of his own now to maybe pull off his socks in this season finally as we make quick work on Oscar Piastri little little love tap I will admit into turn one but I needed to really get uh, past our teammate and now have a go at Kevin Magnussen for P15 progress has been very slim pickings just like it was at the Hungara ring as we go down the inside of Magnussen just about to stay inside the white lines riding the curb on the inside there but Magnussen I don't think he appreciated that overtake because immediately on lap six he's gonna come back at me and in a very bad way he dives down the inside of the carousel and he sideswipes me it's a t-bone collision the safety car is called out because of that and yeah i think he was a bit peeved from the overtake before because he sends it here makes contact with me the only way he's side by side with me is because he's ro rode my tire sidewall um once he'd made that contact could i given him some space yes did I want to? No. So we had a collision. Safety car is out. And this is our cue now to pit. We overtake him because he's an absolute lemming who just spun us out. But we're going to take the opportunity for this free pit stop and uh, go on to the hard tyres. Now, the strategy was pitting around lap 15 for mediums or lap 16 around for mediums. Or maybe going to hards a little bit earlier on lap 12. We're, go we're, go we're going on hards lap 7 because it's a free pit stop. And... I am going to try, you know, take a leaf out of Williams' books in real life. I'm going to try and eke out this hard tyre to the end of the race. Now, that's going to be a big ask, but I think we can manage it with our tyre upgrades. You know, we've got three of them right now. And under the safety car, for whatever reason, Leclerc and Norris pit on the second lap after we've already caught the safety car. So they come out behind me. Perez has pit from the lead, but because he pits... As the safety car came out, he's ahead of me. But Leclerc and Norris, I don't know why they chose to pit the lap after. 
because they've really wrecked their own race in terms of now they're behind me. But even Perez has taken a gamble here. The rest of the top pack have not pit, so maybe they think it wasn't worth it. There's still so much of this race to go on that first tyre they're on. But Perez takes the gamble. Leclerc and Norris, they, they do as well. But it's a little bit half arse because they pit a lap later. As we're now going to try and catch Perez napping, though, as he's tucked up behind Joe Guan Yu. Big send on the Alfa Romeo and the Red Bull to get up into P13. And you know what? Almost immediately on just this first sector as we go round the outside of the Alpha Tauri of Sonoda, get the traction, tiny bit of a squirm on the rear end, but I could tell these hards were so much better than the softs. So the soft tyre, uh, compared to how I felt in the first sector, I'm going to liken this to how Verstappen felt at Spa in the last episode. The soft tyres were just not feeling it at all on the heavy fuel at least as well as we go on the inside of Sargent with a very aggressive move on purpose just to let it be known I'm still peeved off at what happened with him in qualifying at the start of the race as well as we're now in a drag race with De Vries, the second Alfa Tauri without deploying ERS the Alfa Tauri gave me a little bit of a fight as where he actually caught back up on me into turn one but in the end able to outbreak him the hard tires clearly working so much better as we go for a lovely send on the outside of Lawson I'm loving that carousel high line making a v-shape and getting the exit working really well for us on this compound versus the guys on soft and mediums who are clearly maybe feeling some tire wear now and we've already caught up to our teammate Piastri having made that free pit stop onto hard Piastri though goes for it that's what we like to see with the improved pace on the personnel upgrades Oscar Piastri goes for it on Bottas doesn't quite get it but that's a bit more like it we want to see our teammate be a little bit more punchy and that's hopefully going to just improve as we uh, bring that other upgrade but instead here he doesn't get Bottas still some learning to do maybe for Oscar in the cockpit as we get get we get it done around the outside and now have a bit of a squabble with Bottas who's really not wanting to leave us much room as we make contact as he comes across us a little bit on the sidewall into that fast right hander meanwhile up top Verstappen now obviously has assumed the lead of the race because Perez and Leclerc pit but Sainz is all over the back of him and uh, trying to maybe do something obviously trying to come back at him in the championship he's lost a couple of points obviously with how Spa went for Ferrari and him and how, how it went for Red Bull as we now watch the top 10 there Gasly, Alonso, Albon, Stroll, myself, Perez behind us and you can see Leclerc and Norris really struggling in this traffic and Leclerc's on soft so he's definitely making another pit stop so he's not even going long Perez pit under the safety car and gambled on the hards Leclerc pit a lap late under the safety car onto softs very very peculiar to be fair though the Mercedes cars have now pit at this point in the race as well off their first set of tyres and Hamilton went on to soft as well. So I think there's actually quite a few people doing a two-stop around here, which is surprising because this was always a nailed-on one-stop most of last game on F122, just showing the differences, which are good to see in terms of strategy from last game to this game. So yeah, maybe some people doing a two-stop and we might be able to jump them in terms of track position. But right now I'm focused on trying to catch up to the two Aston Martins. Uh, Albon pit, Stroll pit the lap before and now Perez has caught back up to us and we're actually going to go wide on purpose and just let him by because he's not in our race, he really isn't, I would love to say he was like he was at the start of Spa but he's just not and he's already cleared us by 1.2 seconds on lap 16, we're just trying to do the best job we can of eking out these hard tyres and a fight with the Red Bull is not a fight I need but we've got some more pit stops now my teammates in as well so we're up to p3 on lap 17 science he'll have to pit again because i think he hasn't pit yet in this entire race verstappen's now pit from the lead so perez into second uh, into second he'll take first place eventually but uh, my, my apologies, I actually thought he was on hards. He's on, on medium. So whether he has to pit again, I don't know. If he does pit again, could we potentially get into the lead on hard tyres? I don't know. But Leclerc's there in P4. Sainz is now pit. So he's going to go down the order. But he's on hard. So he might go the distance. I don't know. As we now watch Norris get caught by Verstappen. He was the race leader before Perez pit under the safety guy. Goes round the outside and will make the overtake on Sainz as well who, remember, was right behind him 
um, on that clip we saw earlier in the race when them two were still leading the way 1-2. So Verstappen's cleared the Ferrari by a good few seconds and has some great pace at the moment. So I wouldn't be surprised if we're going to see Verstappen in our vicinity sooner rather than later. But, um, you know, the, the race is playing out slowly with the two-stop. You know, Mercedes, at one point, they were down in P16. Uh, now they're up in, like, P7 and 8. So it's going to be a hard one to call. I really can't tell what everyone is doing because there's so many different compounds going on as well, which is great, to be honest. It's really great to see, as I've said from the start of this game, finally we're getting some really different strategies from the different AIs but lap uh, 18 to 19 Leclerc on the softs you would have thought he would have closed up to us on being a too softer compound to be fair we are actually technically ahead of Ferrari on the R&D shot but I took some solace in the fact that he only took about eight tenths out of me on those fresher soft tyres versus my hard so we've got some okay pace on these hard tyres and <laughs> karma karma that's karma logan that is absolute karma disqualified could never be me so we continue our race then on to lap 20 16 laps to go tire wear not feeling too bad you know these tires really aren't eroding that much so i think we can take them to the end it's just going to be about our actual pace on the straights when other people get in our drs because like i said earlier yeah, this, this higher downfall set up for Zandvoort, it's great for the corners, but it's really not doing us any help in a straight line. And Verstappen, like I said, would eventually catch up to us. Again, like with Perez, we're not going to put up a fight because the Red Bulls are very much in a different planet to us in terms of pace. I mean, Perez is now like nearly 8.5 seconds ahead of us, uh, having overtaken us earlier. And Verstappen now is into the lead on lap 24 because Perez did pit off those mediums. We've now got a battle between the old Aston Martin team teammates Alonso gets Lance Stroll Perez is there in P6 to be fair just getting the gasly as we see Albon behind quite close as well but Perez is um, not too you know he's made that second pit stop and the gap is not huge to Verstappen depending on if Verstappen's going to pit or not or if he does Perez might get the undercut there and get the lead once again it's just going to be a case of if Verstappen is going the distance I certainly am but Verstappen I think he's on me he's on he is he's on medium so that's going to be a real question mark for for the race lead but right now lap 26 10 laps to go Fernando Alonso comes at us in the McLaren we give him a good old squeeze and are able to outbreak him and re-overtake him for second place. And this is what we're going to have to do because all these AI have the advantage of me uh, off this banking. We need to try and save the RS for this one straight. And then when they do overtake us, try and go for the re-overtakers. Alonso's on the inside. You've got Perez on the outside. We outbreak uh, Alonso, but Perez is still there on the left. We're going to give him the cold shoulder and stay in second place. But to be honest, uh, at some point, I would imagine Perez will get us and to be honest I'm not going to put up a fight versus Perez I only put up a fight then because Alonso was so close to us but lap 27 we understeer off the racing line and that's how Perez is going to get us you can see my strategy apparently is pitting lap 23 uh, for the soft compound attire so my engineer really did not want me to do a one stop today but I'm trying it because right now we're in a podium position and the cars behind us we should be able to hold back Alonso McLaren Gasly, Alpine, the Aston Martins. Okay, yeah, they're technically quicker than us on R&D. Ferrari are now below us in R&D. So, and the tyres don't feel that bad. So I think we could actually do this and eke this out. We're at 29 now to 36. There's not too long to go, but that snap of oversteer is not going to help as Gasly's through Alonso on the left-hand side. The two of them are going to be side by side as we make a bit of contact with Fernando's rear tyre as we get the break point a little bit too late there. And we've lost two positions in one straight and corner and that was all from that mistake so the tyres may not be horrendous but they're still worn out and there's still opportunity for me to get some oversteer but here we go now with the DRS Alonso and Gasly and we're just going to use the left hand side gain a lot with DRS and pounce back around the outside of both of them to get back into P3. Now lap 30, Leclerc the, in the Ferrari, he's cleared both of them. He's now the one attacking me. We squeeze Leclerc to the left, uh, to the right hand side. We go to the left and like we did with Alonso, we come swooping back in at the apex to re-overtake the Ferrari for P3. If we can just keep doing this, you know, for five more laps, this is a podium. And I think we can keep doing this for five laps. There's no reason not to. So right now, I think we're in a very good position 
where, you know, the tyres aren't horrendous. They're bad, but not horrendous. And we're saving ERS for the right moments in the race. Running out of fuel before the end of this race. What? Start being a little conservative. Oh, my. Ma what? Fuel. That means lifting off the throttle and letting the car coast to the breaking point. Where did our fuel go? Where did our fuel go? Did someone punch a hole in the fuel tank in the pit stop? Where is the fuel gone? What? We, we had a safety car. I set, I put the car in lean mixture in, in under the safety car to save fuel, ironically. And we've somehow come out with minus 0 0.8 laps of fuel we're under. And now, with only five laps to go, this is this is a crisis moment as Joe Guan Yu's out. Leclerc's already got passes because we've already had to implement some lifting and coasting because we're not going to get to end the race now. Oh, my God. This is just ruined. This entire race. Where has this come from? We weren't we weren't tricky on fuel the entire race. And now, all of a sudden, we're minus 0 0.8. Do you understand how under fuel that is? I would have to go out my way to under fuel the car to get to this point of fuel. But I didn't under fuel the car. I actually, you know, it was about half a lap more than we needed to get to the end. And I say fuel under the safety car. And yet, here we are. We've let Alonso and Russell through. And it's kind of depression central here because it's just going to be opening the floodgates because I have to short shift now every gear to try and save the revs and in every long corner I'm lifting off, coasting into the corner then braking, now, oh, oh wow now Gasly's broken our floor, good stuff, love that, um, so it's gone from bad to just worse to absolute disaster here at Zambor you know how I said that thing about karma earlier maybe it came back to bite me, that is Wow. Lap 33 to 36. It's just going to be pain. Look at all these cars I've got behind me now. I mean, a lot of them were bunched up behind me anyway because of the work we were doing on the, on the hard tyre. But now it's just a case of, well, hopelessly defending but letting them through. Oh, this is such a howler. This is... Uh, I, ne I rarely never get the fuel wrong. Like, maybe once on F122, I think I ran out of fuel on the line at Brazil once. But most of the time, I'm pretty good with judging how much fuel we need. So that is a calamity. Well, I'm actually scratching my head. Let me go, uh, let me guys know in the comments below if you've done Zandvoort as well and you face some difficulty with the fuel. Because I really thought we were fine. I filled it up enough, I thought, to start the race. And it's so difficult, by the way, to save the fuel mid-race when you can't change to lean mixture because it's locked off, obviously, in normal race conditions. Five laps of fuel saving, five laps of lift and coast, short shift, and only now on the last lap do we get enough fuel to finish this race. Verstappen is going to win this one in front of his home van, so I can expect some flares going off any minute now. But we just make it through to the end of the race, and we're, well, we may as well be last because it's Ocon behind us, and then you've got Joe who got DN DNF'd in Logan Sargent, who was disqualified. And even with the fuel saving, to the line, look at the right-hand side, I, I crossed the line in low fuel mode. I crossed the line in low fuel mode, even after six laps of fuel saving. Wow. What a calamity. What a calamity. I'm, I'm, I can't be convinced that uh, someone didn't punch a hole in our fuel tank. Where did that fuel go? What a great race, then, and a magnificent victory here at the Dutch Grand Prix. So, Natalie, what do you think helped them deliver this result? I feel consistency was probably the key today. There's being quick, and then there's being quick lap after lap after lap. If you can do that, you can capitalise on other people's errors without making many of your own. And that's an approach that can push you a long way up the field. The drivers are en route to the podium as we speak. What a fantastic win for the Red Bull team. They performed exceptionally today, keeping us firmly on the edge of our seats throughout the entirety of the race. Congratulations to everybody at the team. Well, after a very exciting start to the season, where it was, what, like eight, eight different winners in nine races? Um, Verstappen now is coming into his own. Red Bull are coming to their own. Ironically, the moment where Red Bull are, they've got the smallest gap in the R&D graph to the cars behind them, this is when they're dominating the most. Whereas at the start of the season, it was all, it was anyone's game, really. So yeah, Red Bull and Verstappen are becoming inevitable here. I know Perez just won the last race, but Verstappen obviously still got a podium at Spa. He wins it here. Sainz is down in seventh place. Leclerc, third place. Okay, maybe a couple of points, but Sainz was the higher Ferrari.
and Russell's actually the nearest man to Verstappen in the championship. It's a 41-point gap. Now, maybe Mercedes overtake Red Bull in terms of R&D pace on the performance chart in the next episode, and maybe Russell can mount a charge to bridge the 41-point gap. But right now, it is not looking good for the rest of them. Red Bull are in control. Max is in control. For us, it's a weekend to forget. What a howler with the fuel there. It was going really well. I was actually supremely, supremely confident of a podium on those hards, but the fuel tank said nah. So, yeah, frustrating. Bit of a weird, funny one, to be honest, how that worked out. So, guys, if you have enjoyed the video, nonetheless, then be sure to hit the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.